Hardcore. Get the dog. Not you, Diesel. Right, so behind me is a King's flat rack, roof rack, roof platform, whatever you want to bloody call it. Now this is from Full Drive Supercenter, very well known for rusting out, so quality is not there, but budget is there. This thing is only $400 for the whole thing, and it should be pretty easy to actually adapt this to our Triton, because it isn't technically made for our Triton, but it does fit a Pajero, I'm pretty sure that they've got the same roof. So what I'm thinking is I'll take a measurement of the Triton, we'll figure out exactly where we need to cut it, and let's say it lands right about here, We'll cut right through the roof rack there. Then we'll come down to the back and we will cut this section off here so we can keep our 90 degree bend here. And we'll have to weld it back onto this section and recreate the back end of the roof rack. So we're just moving it up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do first is take some measurements on how long we want this roof rack on the Triton. Then we're gonna come over here and start cutting into this brand new roof rack. And hopefully if it starts rusting out, Kings will still accept a cut down roof rack for a warranty return. We'll see how that goes. We also got young Diesel in the workshop today to give us a hand, but as you guys know, he's the laziest apprentice on the planet. So I'll probably have to get a new apprentice soon and start advertising for that. Come on, Diesel, you gonna do anything? Buddy, that's all he does all day. So far so good. You can see we chopped right down the middle and she's looking pretty good. Now my main concern is that it doesn't look bent when I weld it together. So we've got to make sure that they are perfectly parallel with each other. Now ideally I'd be putting a sleeve in here to actually help with some of the weight. But in all honesty, I don't think much weight will be going on this. And it's also going to be bolted down to the car itself as well as being welded. It's not like it's a hanging weight. It's actually got its own feet here. So I think it's just going to be right with just a seam weld right around the outside. Then we can tidy it up. So I'm going to start lining everything up and uh, start tacking it all together. Hopefully we can get this thing to look as factory as possible. Alright guys, the roof rack is done and what I did is I just bogged up a couple of the grinding marks and laid some black paint over it so she is looking really good now. But I'm honestly quite happy with how that turned out. You can hardly tell that it has even been shortened. Now I'm pretty certain that you can actually just go online and buy a flat rack for a dual cab that's very well similar to this. But I didn't have time to order one online, the only one I could find was this full length one. So this is how we're doing it and I think it's actually turned out alright. So now I need to figure out where our mounting locations are, why this is drying. And that brings us over to our mounts. Now these are basically what you get on a gutter mount kit. So you have the bracket that actually connects to the roof rack itself. You then have this piece here that connects to that bracket and that sits in your gutter. And then you have a clamp that comes over the top of it like that. And this basically just sandwiches on your gutter. So what I'm gonna do is pull the Triton in. We're gonna start measuring how far away these brackets need to get. Then we can pre-fit them to our rack and then we can hopefully lift the rack up by ourselves and get it installed. 
Right, now we have the Triton in the shed. This is the drip rail that we are sandwiching to. So basically one bracket will go down inside this rail and the other one comes under and sandwiches it on. So what I need to do is measure the distance from here to the other side and that'll give us the distance that we have to mount on our roof rack. And the other thing is the height is a little bit adjustable too because that kind of sits there and we can move that up and down but I want this to be as low as possible, so I'll probably just set it to the lowest setting. So I'm gonna do a little bit of measuring up and then we'll start pre-fitting some uh, brackets. Righto guys, the rack is now done. I've got all four mounts tidied up. Uh, everything's nice and tight, the paint's dry, and she's ready to rumble and ready to go on top of the Triton. So I'm gonna try and manhandle it on top of the tray and then on top of the car. We'll center it up and uh, hopefully we'll get a nice position and then we'll tighten it up and we'll have a bloody roof rack on the Triton. All right, after some quick adjustments, the roof rack is now on, but I don't know if I like the look of this thing at all. It's like decent enough, but it just sits up a little bit high. Um, but I'll let you guys have a look, see what you reckon. I am gonna be chucking a light bar on it today, which will help a lot. Let's have a look. Let's see what you guys think. That's it, guys. It looks not too bad, I guess. Actually, it looks a lot better on camera than it does in real life. And we're gonna be putting a light bar right across the top there, so that'll help with the look a lot. What I've done is I've pushed it back as far as possible because our light bar is gonna go right there. I don't want it glaring into my window, so that is as far back as I want it. And I've basically got it flush with the back window there, as you can see. Yeah, she's on. And you can see from this angle, it just looks a little bit funny. But hey, we are just gonna run with it. I'm definitely not gonna be modifying it to drop it down. It's just way too much work and I cannot be bothered with that. So it is time to put these clamps on. I have just uh, quickly adjusted these uh, feet to sit in there nice. So I'm gonna clamp it all up and get it mounted and then we can start look at mounting some lights to it, which is the exciting part. All right, as you can see, we've got our bracketry held down and in position. And this thing's actually growing on me pretty quickly. I think it looks pretty bloody good. I think it just looks weird when you first put them on because you're like fully staring at just that one thing. You're not looking at the whole car as a picture. But anyway, what we need to do is install a light bar across here. And I also have a light bar for the bull bar here. So I'm just gonna back it back a bit to give us some room to sort of work here. And I've got a little trick with a harness so you don't have to buy two, but they both will switch on at the same time. But that's kind of what I want anyway. So you can see I've got two Kings uh, little light bars here. One's a 40 inch, that's gonna go up top. One's only uh, 20 inch, I believe. And it is going on the bottom. Now they are both slims just because I like the look of slims. I don't like the double rows. Now I've also bought one wiring harness for a spotlight but it comes with two plugs. And then what we're gonna do is just extend one plug up to the roof bar, and then we can basically use the same switch for both lights, and you only have to buy one wiring harness. Now, first things first, we need to mount these bad boys. So I'm gonna mount the bull bar one first, then we're gonna move on to the roof rack and just get it all mounted. So I'll quickly do that, and then we'll look at wiring them up. So before I start mounting stuff, I actually rip that out. I'm gonna be painting these because I don't like the chrome and you can see it's gone all crap around the uh, lights there. So what I'll do, I'll hit it with a bit of scotch bright, and I'll paint the outside in just a normal paint and I'll paint this clear bit and the indicator in a nightshade, which is a tint spray. Then we can put that back in and they'll kind of just blend in then. It won't look so weird. So yeah, I'm just gonna do this in the background real quick and then we can start mounting the light bars. This thing has actually turned out so sick. I'm very, very stoked with how this looks. We've got the slim light bar on the front, the slim light bar on the roof rack. Originally, I was thinking that that roof rack was too high, but now I think it's perfect with the light bar underneath it. So we've got the light bar up the top, light bar down the bottom, and she is looking like a proper bloody rig now. So there it is, guys. This is basically its final form of how it's gonna look. The roof rack definitely just ties it in 
and makes it look a lot better. Now, I did also mount these uh, tinted indicators now. I did go a little bit too heavy on the tint there. So they're basically just black now, but anyway, they look really good. Now, if you're wondering how I did it, I actually use this product called Nightshade. Now, it is like a tint spray. You can buy that from just about any parts store at the moment. And it also got uh, sanded, I don't know where the scotch Bright pad is, but I use like a sponge, like a scotch Bright pad. Um, here it is. I use one of these things and uh, get rid of all the shine on the chrome, hit it with the primer, hit it with the paint, and you'll be good to go. So we didn't just bolt these light bars on to look pretty, it is time to wire them up. Now, just like I said, what I've done is I've gone out and bought a spotlight wiring harness. Now that comes with two plugs, one for each spotlight, but then you can also buy a lighting extension cord. This basically will save you from wiring things up twice. It also does less clutter inside of the engine bay, but the only downside is you can't individually control them unless you put another switch onto this bad boy here. Now these are really easy. The quality isn't that great of these. I'll be honest, I have had them before and they are pretty average. But yeah, let's pull this out and have a look at how we're going. It's actually the next day. I ran out of time last night, but as you've seen, we got the lights all wired up and they're working on their switch. So I mounted the relay just here. It was actually the best spot I could find to tuck all the wires and hide them away. We've got our positive and negative hooked up. It is also hooked into our lights down there. You can see I've ran the switch wire through the grommet just here and then you can see one plug there, and then the other plug actually goes down to the light bar. Now, I didn't actually have to extend the harness at all for the plugs. I actually had enough of the spotlight lead to come up to here, and one to the light bar, so that was really good. One thing that's really annoying about mounting something on the roof like that is you have to run the wire up the side of the window like that, and there was no really nice way to do this. I kind of had to massage that wire in and under there. Um, I did also have to extend it because the plug finished about here, so I extended it right down into here. And it's definitely not the most proudest job I've ever done because all I did is just silicon it to the window there. But as you can see, it goes up to the light bar. So I had a blank spot here, so I've used that. That is on and off. So you can see when I turn the key on, headlights on, uh, flick that to on, and then we push forward for high beam. Our lights start working, so back, you can see flashing and then we get a red light on that switch so i'll just shut this bonnet so you guys can see properly oh that's bright that is bloody bright so there you have it guys all the lights are working that looks absolutely sick there's actually only a few globes left in this car um, we've changed just about everything to leds now our tint strips they go really heavy on the tint so you can barely see that but that's all right because you can actually just use some alcohol or something and get that off and redo it. Now, the other thing I've done is with our Safari snorkel here, it was really faded. So I went ahead and painted that and it is looking so much better. It's still drying off a little bit. So there's only a few little things left to do and that is basically, I wanna paint these windshield wipers and see the rust on them. They're just not looking good at all. So I'll get those off and get them painted. I was also tossing up whether to tint spray this and tint spray this light here. But honestly, I might leave it for now and just paint those uh, window wipers. And then we can check it out in the light and then we are done for today. Window rubber is actually falling apart and I had to silicon that up because the roof was leaking. So just ignore that for now because I'm gonna try and track down a uh, rubber for the window. And if I can't track one down, I'll actually just paint that little silver bit black. But anyway, let's get these windshield wipers off and give them a quick lick of paint. I'm just gonna lightly scuff them up and then just spray them with just some enamel paint that I've got sitting around here.
What a bloody rig, mate. Right, oh, they are all finished and painted up. I actually also painted this bit of metal here because it was starting to rust a little bit. So she is all nice and tidy. Now that is actually all we are gonna get done in today's video, but we do need to update the budget. So today's episode was actually the most expensive one. You guys can see right there, $711 for the lights and the roof rack. Now I'm gonna separate this on the board here. So we've got roof rack was $479. Lighting was actually $200 with the harness. So guys, with everything spent so far, we have spent $1,899, leaving us with $101 in our budget. Now the build is definitely not over until we spend that bloody two grand. So we still have $101 to finish this thing off and I have a pretty big plan with this and I don't know if I can pull it off. It's all gonna come down to Facebook Marketplace. So I'm gonna quickly back this thing out so we can check it out in the light, but today was a very successful day. The roof rack has definitely transformed the look of this car. So let's get it out and have a look. All right, I got the Triton pulled out and this thing looks so sick. It's actually unreal that we've gone from what this thing was to how it looks now for only 18, $1,900. The roof rack, when I originally bolted on, I didn't really like it, but it's definitely grown on me. It looks so good. Here's a side shot. You can see the roof rack up there looking really, really nice. And the light bar up there just ties everything in so nicely. And then obviously we've done the slim one down the bottom as well. Looks so good. You can even see diesels in there having a bloody gander. Look at him. But God, it's come a friggin' long way since when we first got it. This thing looks so much better. The front end of this car just looks so friggin' good. It's actually hard to believe that this is even a Triton. Now we are obviously only $100 from hitting our $2,000 budget. So I'm hoping that the next episode on this thing is actually gonna incorporate the $100 as well as taking this thing out for a little 4B for the first time. Now it's not gonna go good, so don't get your hopes up, but I really wanna see what a car that's under four grand can do on the tracks. And I think it's gonna be a really fun episode to film and I think it'd be really fun to watch. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we can get this thing out for its maiden voyage. I mean, have a bloody look at the thing. It's dialed, it's ready for its bloody first drive. I just reckon we go straight to Little Red, send her straight up the hardest track. Now this is it with the light bars on. You can see we've got plenty of LEDs going on now. So that is bloody mint. I'm just gonna go out on a whim and say that nighttime driving is gonna be a whole lot better with these things on. Now there's not much more we can do to this thing within our budget and we've obviously only got $100 left. But if everything goes to plan over the next couple of weeks, I've got a really good idea to get this thing out on the tracks and incorporate the $100 into that video as well. So look out for that episode. But for now, I am gonna finish up because I'm done for the day. If you did wanna grab some of the merch, the shirt that I've been wearing throughout this whole episode is actually on sale for $30 at the moment. We also have our window banners that is on the front of the car at the moment. So if you want one of those, definitely head to roamlife.com, pick yourself one up, much appreciated. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.